Let's continue our conversation about, <laughs> <laughs> about marketing. All right, so what is marketing? We're talking about green marketing. We're talking about Nabisco and Procter & Gamble. What is, what is marketing? Making people aware of what you have to offer. That's definitely part of it. So we want to um, communicate information about our product, about our brand. So <laughs> we need to create, communicate, and deliver value. That's essentially what marketing is. And we could talk a little bit more about what are some of the key marketing activities, but essentially it's about creating, communicating, and delivering value. So the next question is, what is value? It's relative. It, it is relative, but so tell us more about that. What is value as a function of what? The use that someone can get out of it. Yes, the benefits, absolutely. So value is a function of the benefits of a product or service. And what the else? The cost that you associate with the product or the service. Yep, absolutely. So the price and... Also the importance of it to the consumer to to buying something, the importance of that product or product. And so in terms of um, the functional... Um, like what might be important to me might not be important to you, so I would place a higher value on it than it goes to you. Oh, okay. Yeah, I would think that... I, I would tie that back into what Oliver was saying about the benefits. So it's... Oh. You, the product has a certain amount of benefits. To Oliver, that's important. Oh, to you, it's not. But also quality. So it's a function. Value is a function of quality, price, and benefits. And it's important to um, focus on the term function because those components that we mentioned, they're not additive. They each stand on their own. So when we talk about price, for example, it's not that the product has a low price that means it's a good value. If the product has a high price and it has a significant number of benefits and is of a very high quality, then we could say it's a, it's a good value. It's not when we say value, it doesn't mean that it's cheap. Because we could have, we could decide to penetrate a given market with a low price version of a product or have a high price version of the product. What consumers, let's say, for example, are going to decide... The generic brain. Right. They're going to decide whether or not um, it's a good value to them. Yeah. So it could be a high price, though. It's important to make that distinction. It doesn't mean... Value doesn't mean a low price. It could be a high price, but it goes back to you get what you pay for. So value would be associated to the, with the consumer, while price would be associated to the seller. Right, the seller is going to set the price. Mm -hmm. So like with the that iPhone. The right, the iPhone. The Apple sets the price of the iPhone. They set the price at um, $400. And then consumers have got to decide whether or not that's a good value. So is it a better value than a phone that's $100? So can, if, if, do they offer enough benefits is the quality high enough to um, to justify that price now some might think yes some might think no that's it's true that's that's subjective but we need to understand that as marketers as business people that consumers are making an assessment there's definitely there's a perception of value when they're con looking at a product or a service. Now when we think about the different alternatives for a particular product, consumers will think about a variety of different brands. Some of them are what we call the evoked set. The evoked set is all those brands 
that come to mind in a given category. So like for beverages, for example, let's go around the room and everybody say the name of one, the brand name of one beverage. But there's, like in the beverage category, we could think of dozens and dozens yeah. of different brands. But they're mostly uh, the main brand, and then you have the sub brands. Well, the some of them have some of them have sub brands. That's true, but the um, the the master brands, right? What about these dozens that we haven't mentioned? Sprite, Dr Pepper, Dr Brown, Fanta, right? Sunkissed. There's Dasani's, but that's um, a master brand. That's a, it is owned by um, by Pepsi. Tropicana. Right, Tropicana, Minute Maid, um, Sierra Mist, Mountain Dew. Mountain Dew. Right, dozens and dozens of different different brands. So when we think, when we realize that we have a need, that let's say we're thirsty, then the Evoke set is all those brands of beverages that come to mind that are going to quench our thirst. However, being a part of the Evoke set is not enough for us as marketers. We have to be part of the consideration set. The consideration set is the set of brands that the consumer is actually going to consider purchasing. So you might be really excited to say when we do um, brand equity research and track the level of brand awareness and find out well, how many consumers or what percentage of the consumers that we surveyed said that they were aware of our brand. So even Coke for example Okay, it's part of the Evoke set. And it may even be top of mind. The brand that is mentioned first is, has the most enviable brand awareness position, which is top of mind awareness. Unaided top of mind awareness. Because um, unaided awareness is like what we just did. What brands of beverage um, can you name? And you might list 12 or 15 or 25. Aided awareness is when the researcher says, have you ever heard of Dr. Pepper? Have you ever heard of Sierra Mist? Aided awareness levels, of course, are going to be uh, much higher. But wouldn't you just absolutely fall on the floor if you found out that the brand Coke was part of the Evoke set, but not part of the consideration set. Right? If you were doing the market research and, and you were the, the, the brand manager or the VP of marketing, and consumers said, yeah, Coke, Pepsi, Snapple, and then you say, well, which, if you were going to, if you were thirsty right now and you were going to, um, drink a beverage, which one would you drink? And they said, Snapple. But what if there wasn't any Snapple? Well, Mountain Dew. And if there's no Mountain Dew? Pepsi. And if there's no Pepsi? You're like, dude, you're killing me here. Like, you wouldn't, you wouldn't drink a Coke? Nah. So, yeah, we'd have to, we have to understand that awareness of our brand is not enough. Having brand awareness in advertising is the objective of every advertising campaign. In fact, as part of your advertising brief, as far as, and 